Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Mathematics Parshala. This is a problem of CSINA December 2023 Mathematical Sciences. This is a problem of real analysis part C. The question ID 704070. First we read the question. Suppose that f such that minus 1 to 1 close interval to r is continuous. Which of the following imply that f is identically 0 on closed minus 1, 1? So now let us uh, analyze the 1 by 1 options. First look at option 3 that it says that integration minus 1 to 1 fx into x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to odd. So the question is if this holds then is f identically 0 on minus 1 1. So see if we take simply fx equal to 1 <coughs> then clearly f is continuous on minus 1 1 constant function and also we have integration minus 1 to 1 fx in x to the power n equal to fx equal to 1 so this is x to the power n dx. So this will be x to the power n plus 1 uh, by n plus 1 and the limit is minus 1 to 1. So this uh, we are given that this equal to uh, uh, okay. So now uh, for all n for all n greater than equal to 0 which are odd numbers then clearly n plus 1 will be even and this will be clearly 0. For all odd n this will be 0. But this does not imply that f is identically 0 on minus 1 1 because we have a function f which is not identically 0 and for this f this option satisfies That's that integration minus 1 to 1 fx into x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0 or but f is not identically 0. So this option does not imply that f is identically 0 on minus 1 1. So option 3 is not the correct option. Exactly in similar manner if we take simply fx equal to x then this integration minus 1 to 1 fx into x to the power n will be integration minus 1 to 1 x to the power n plus 1 because fx is x here dx. So this will be x to the power n plus 2 and the limit is minus 1 to 1. So see for all n greater than equal to 0 even we have this n plus 2 is also even. So this 1 to the power n plus 2 minus minus 1 to the power n plus 2 will be simply 1 minus 1 will be 0. So now we have a we have f such that this integration minus 1 to 1 fx into x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0 even but f is not identically 0 because f is fx equal to x. So option 4 does not imply that fx is identical f is identically 0 and minus 1 1. So option 4 is not the correct option. Now look at option 1 and option 2 clearly if option 1 is true that means integration minus 1 to 1 fx into x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0 implies f identically 0 then clearly option 2 will be correct because option 2 says that integration minus 1 to 1 fx px equal to dx equal to 0 for all real polynomials px. So simply we will take px equal to x to the power n for uh, for n varies over n natural number. So then we will have option 1 and as option 1 uh, is true we have just uh, suppose if option 1 is true then uh, then for option 2 when we have taken px equal to x to the power n then we get option 1 and by option 1 we have f is identically 0. So option 1 is true implies option 2 is true. So now we actually show here that option 1 is true. So we will prove the op this option is true. So now for option 1, we will just prove this result that 
we are given integration minus 1 to 1 fx into x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0 this is we are given and we have to show that to show f must be identically 0 identically 0 on minus 1 1 so for this first let we are given that f from minus 1 1 to r a continuous function and we have Weistrass approximation theorem so first let an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 and for this epsilon by Weistrass approximation theorem there exists a polynomial phi say phi x equal to say a0 plus a1 x dot dot an x to the power n or say a uh, a k x to the power k just uh, taking a different suffix so this is a k x to the power k such that we have mod f x minus phi x less than <clears throat> epsilon by 2 that is we have fx minus epsilon by 2 less than phi x less than fx plus epsilon by 2 so multiplying by x to the power n when n is even we have x to the power n into this fx minus epsilon by 2 <coughs> less than fx in uh, sorry phi x into x to the power n less than fx plus epsilon by 2 into x to the power n then taking on integration we have integration minus 1 to 1 x to the power n fx dx minus epsilon by 2 integration minus 1 to 1 x to the power n dx and then it will be less than equal to integration minus 1 to 1 phi x into x to the power n dx less than equal to integration minus 1 to 1 fx x to the power n dx plus epsilon by 2 integration minus 1 to 1 x to the power n dx. So now what we get we get just we are given that this integration minus 1 to 1 x to the power n fx dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0. Uh, we are given by um, uh, from option 1. So this will be 0 minus this epsilon by 2 x to the power n plus 1 by here n plus 1 and the limit is from minus 1 to 1. This is uh, less than equal to integration minus 1 to 1 phi x x to the power n dx less than equal to 0 plus epsilon by 2 this is also x to the power n plus 1 and this is n plus 1 and the limit is minus 1 to 1 so we get from here that this is actually epsilon by n plus 1 less than equal to integration minus 1 to 1 phi x dx less than equal to sorry minus is this epsilon by n plus 1 so actually what we get that, that is mod integration minus 1 to 1 sorry here x to the power n is missing from here 
we have to write phi x into x to the power n dx. So now what we get actually a mod integration minus 1 to 1 phi x into x to the power n dx less than equal to epsilon by n plus 1 and that is also less than epsilon. So we have as epsilon is taken an arbitrary positive number so we must have this integration minus 1 to 1 a phi x x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0 even n and exactly in similar manner if we take n is odd then similarly using this inequality we also have integ integration minus 1 to 1 phi x x to the power n dx equal to 0. So ultimately what we have integration minus 1 to 1 phi x x to the power n dx equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 0. So these things we have now. Now see so we have when we take n equal to 0, we have integration minus 1 to 1 phi x dx equal to 0. So we have a 0 into integration minus 1 to 1 phi x dx equal to 0. If n equal to 1, we have integration minus 1 to 1 phi x into x dx equal to 0 dx equal to 0 and then we have just multiplying this by a1 we have a1 integration minus 1 to 1 phi x into x dx equal to 0 and similarly when n equal to 2 it will be uh, n equal to 2 it will be integration minus 1 to 1 phi x x square dx and from this we have uh, multiplying a2 a2 into integration minus 1 to 1 phi x x square dx equal to 0 and similarly at the n equal to k we have ultimately we have this a k integration minus 1 to 1 phi x into x to the power k equal to uh, dx equal to 0 and adding this we have adding this we have a 0 uh, integration minus 1 to 1 phi x into a 0 plus a 1 x a 2 x square dot dot a k x to the power k dx equal to 0 and this is actually our phi x so ultimately we have integration minus 1 to 1 integration minus 1 to 1 phi x a whole square phi x a whole square dx equal to 0 dx equal to 0 it implies that Uh, so, as here, uh, as here phi x whole square, as here phi x whole square is greater than equal to 0 and it is also continuous. So, we must have this phi, this phi square is identically 0. So, that is phi is identically 0. That means phi x equal to 0 for all x belongs to minus 1, 1. Minus 1, 1. So now from this, if we name this first inequality by 1, this mod fx minus phi x less than epsilon by 2 by 1, then we have from 1, we have putting this phi x is 0 identically, we have. mod fx 
minus 0 less than epsilon by 2 that means mod fx less than epsilon by 2 and as epsilon is taken arbitrary positive number so we must have fx equal to 0. So what we have proved that if epsilon is taken an arbitrary positive number then this mod fx less than epsilon by 2 so if so mod fx so uh, mod fx is less than any arbitrary positive number so we must have mod fx is 0 that is fx is 0 identically for all x belongs to minus 1 1 closed interval so we have so we have f is identically 0 so that means if option 1 is satisfied then f will be identically 0 and minus 1 1 so option 1 is the correct option and we already said that if option 1 is true then using this px equal to 1 by 1 uh, first px is uh, x to the power 0 then px is x square and so on taking these polynomials we have option 1 is satisfied and then uh, as we have proved that then uh, if option 1 is satisfied then f is identically 0 and minus 1 1 so if option 2 is satisfied the condition in option 2 is satisfied then f is identically 0 and minus 1 1 close interval so option 2 is the correct option so here option 3 and 4 are not the correct options and option 1 and 2 are the correct options this is the solution of this problem. Thanks.